Welcome to this Way to Fire YouTube video and uh, it's me Andy, I'm here again playing solo all on my own um, but I am playing five kilometers from Leipzig now this is a, another variant of the sort of five core system from Ivan Sorensen of Nordic Weasel Games so if you've seen the five parsecs videos we've done and the uh, five leagues on the borderlands this is just another variant of that it's a historical black powder variant though um, designed really for sort of anything from Napoleonics, French Indian Wars up to sort of breech loader or even colonial uh, wars actually I think it could work fine for any of those um, I am going to have my first game of this which is going to be set with my Peninsula British against the Peninsula French so around about 1811, 1812, something like that um, in the Iberian Peninsula in Spain um, going to do a short scenario uh, I'm not sure this one's, this is only a beta version so it hasn't got quite the same depth as some of the other games I mentioned before Borderlands and Five Parsecs for instance so I'm not sure if I'll play too many uh, certainly not in the Napoleonic period because one of the things it lacks of course is it doesn't have quite the range of different characters uh, different troop types and so on there's a bit of range but essentially they've all got the same sort of weaponry and stuff so it's not quite as varied what I might do is do a French Indian Wars one uh, instead at some later point as well because then I can bring in the uh, Native Americans for instance the different types of French and British troops uh, might be a bit more variation there but anyway we're going to play today um, and I've got my little team here of um, six models that's what you have I've got Lieutenant Horace Ponsonby Smythe in the center there who has a sword which gives him plus one brawling or fighting and he has a pistol which only has a four inch range you can either use it to shoot though or you can use it in hand to hand uh, I have in front of him on the lower slope Sergeant Jebediah Whitaker. now he has a musket actually but I've got him with the um, half pike there just because he looks cool and it clearly marks him out as a sergeant he's nimble on his feet uh, perhaps surprisingly so he's actually got a speed of six rather than four inches like everybody else does and then I've got Private Graham Wilde um, the one who's on the hill loading putting a musket ball to his uh, teeth he is a keen shot so he gets plus one to shoot so he has a combat value of one everybody else has a combat value of zero and then the rest are all basic grunts Private Nathaniel Grant top right Private Thomas Crossley, bottom left, and Private Matthew Kirkham, bottom right. Now, there's no way I'm going to remember all of their names because, again, being historical models, um, they don't look that different because they were in uniforms. So it's a bit different than medieval ones or science fiction ones, for instance. So I am going to be playing uh, a mission I rolled randomly. Secure, the, it's called Secure. So in the very centre of the table, which I'll show you in a moment, there's going to be a point, and if you're... If my models are within two inches of that and there are no enemies, at the end of a turn I will score two victory points. And then you roll two dice and if you roll underneath the amount of victory points at any turn, you do it every turn, sorry. If ever, ever I get underneath the total victory points I have at that point, then the game will end and I will win. If not, then I will be destroyed or there will be no enemies left on the table either way. Uh, the enemy have already deployed, I'll show them in a minute and then I'll show you where I deploy 24 inches apart from them. I did not seize the initiative in this case. I'm fighting against five French line infantry, so they are just basic troops. You can have riflemen, which I guess I wouldn't exactly have riflemen on the French, but I'd class them as voltigeurs, for instance. Um, for those who haven't watched the videos before, these similar sort of videos, what will happen is you'll roll a dice each turn to see for the reactions. Um, if you roll equal to or under the reaction value, which is 2 in this case for all of my guys, then they can activate in the quick phase. Then you have the enemy phase, where all of the enemy models will get to move, and then you have the slow phase, so any of mine that didn't get a quick reaction will go in the slow phase. They can take two actions, one of which would be move uh, and then shoot. You can sometimes forego your move to reload or to aim. Um, shooting is it all on a d6 
If you're in the open and closed, it'll be a three. If you're at distance, it'll be a five. If you're in cover, it will be a six. And when you hit someone, you then roll it under, uh, over their toughness. And generally, these guys are going to have toughness of three. Um, it's slightly different for the wounding than in five parsecs, but only very minorly, and we'll come across that, I'm sure. Uh, that's enough chatting, I think. I'll show you around the table after deployment, and we'll get ready to crack on with this game. Okay, here we are. We are at this little inn with its barn. This is where everyone's trying to capture, and the centre of the table where I need to be is marked by that um, statue there. A pretty grand statue, isn't it, for, a, for an inn? Uh, the French are coming in from this side, so there's three in the front rank and two more behind, just five of them, against my six models. We roll randomly, see how many you get. So Ponsonby Smythe is there in the centre, my better shooting guy is this side, normal guy there, and then my sergeant and the other two guys are at this wood. And we're trying to get through, obviously, to grab it. Not that much cover for me, but the woods will be useful. Um, but anyway, we'll see how we get along. So just because there might be some new people watching, uh, I'll go over the rules. So the reaction dice, I roll one dice for each model I have. So you can see I've marked, put these dice down next to each model. Uh, I actually roll an additional dice in this game because I have a leader, Ponsonby, of course, and I can discard one of the dice. So I ended up having three dice that were two or less. My reactions are two. So I can basically put a dice next to each of those guys and they get to act and that's what I've done. So these two, Ponsonby and this guy, just moved their movement of four inches and instead of taking a combat action, they then dashed for two inches. So they moved a total of six inches and that's them done. I then moved up this guy just to close the distance a little bit and he tried a shot over at that um, Frenchman there coming forwards in the bonnet um, and I needed a six at that range. It's right at the limit of his range of 24 inches so I didn't hit him. Um, and that's it for my quick actions. These guys who I've given the higher dice numbers to will have to wait there. The French will then get to do their actions and they follow a simple AI, i.e. if they can see people, they'll shoot at them. If they can't, then they'll move until they can shoot at them. Um, and then I'll get to move with these last models here. So we'll come back in a moment. So for the French, uh, most of these guys, four of them just moved forwards and then dashed, keeping themselves in cover because they wouldn't have clear line of sight. Um, and then the one who got shot at, he stayed put. He fired over at my guy here, but missed him. And you see I've put a little marker down to show that I'm reloading with my guy. I, I, my gun is empty, I need to reload. But actually with this guy, because he fired his first action, his second one he can just reload with. So that's the end of the French movement. And then it will be my last guys here. And we'll do them now. And I've actually just moved those guys up into the wood. They're going to cast that all as difficult ground and cover. So they're getting better positions for next round rather than fire now at a bit of a disadvantage. So that's the end of round one. I'll go a bit quicker in the subsequent rounds so that um, we won't pause for each um, phase unless something exciting is happening. Bit of shooting from this guy and a little bit from this guy. Um, my better shooting guy managed to get a hit uh, and but didn't manage to get past the toughness so has stunned this guy which means he's going to have one action next turn. So he'll be able to fire but then obviously he will be, his gun will be empty. Uh, I only got the two early actions so now it's going to be the French. They are mostly going to be in a position to shoot now so that's what they'll do. So round two, the stunned one at the back there. He... Um, just fired, but that leaves him with an empty rifle musket now. Uh, these two guys fire, but ineffectually. These didn't have targets, so they've run into aiming for a bit more cover by the tavern there. My guys, my guys just basically fired at them and ineffectually didn't manage to hit anybody. Uh, Ponsonby moved up, but I'm going to have to start moving forwards because I need to get to that centre piece now. Obviously, it's a bit open at this side of the table, unfortunately. So uh, I think I'll probably have a bit of movement on my left and these guys will form a fire base on the right. Not really the right terminology for 18-12, but you know, we'll go with it. So at the end of round three, there's a lot more movement. These guys fired ineffectually. 
The stunned one just moved into colour, the other one moved into colour and then fired ineffectually. I've decided to be a bit bolder on the right here actually, now that those guys are behind the tavern table. So one guy's moved over here so we can start firing down the line at them. Uh, my sergeant has moved through the woods, he, both of those also fired. So, um, actually sorry, this guy didn't fire, sorry, my sergeant fired. Um, this guy obviously fired in the quick phase, moved this guy up and fired ineffectually, and Ponsonby has been very bold. Follow me, chaps, as he's gone charging forwards, but so far he's probably put himself in a bit of danger, uh, and not close enough to score the points. So, we'll see what happens in round four. Hopefully I'll get some quick reactions, take some of these Frenchmen down. So at the start of turn four, I did get some quick reactions. Did some firing with this guy, didn't manage to hit anything. He's obviously loaded his gun then fired, so he's unloaded again. Similar down here, but I did get a hit. I got a hit right back on the guy I've been firing at all along. I managed to wound him, which is what happens if you roll equal to his toughness of three. Um, the wounding means that every time he activates, at the end of that activation, he rolls a dice on a one, he passes out from his injuries for each, rolls one dice for each wound that he has. I then moved this guy forwards and fired down a nice clear shot there onto that guy behind the tavern table and I've taken him out. So that guy's out of the game actually, so I am just starting to claw the advantage now. But it is the French guys go, um, they're in fiery position so that's what they're going to do. Despite being very close, because Ponsonby's still in cover they needed fives to hit him and they've missed. This guy failed to shoot back across at my sniper guy and obviously didn't die from his wound. This guy, however, did fire down onto my guy who took out his friend and has taken me out as well. So, I think that's Mark. He's lying on the floor. Um, okay, I've got my slow actions now. So I've got Ponsonby and my two guys here. So Sergeant Jebediah has run over here. He can't help his friend, but he's going to check on him. Maybe he'll help him in the post-game assessment. I am still unloaded, though. And Ponsonby! has been brave and has charged forwards there to claim the objective. I'll get two victory points for that now. And this dude here fired, but ineffectually so. So I have got two victory points. Um, and I need to make a roll now to see if I win the game, which I'm not going to roll under two on two dice, obviously. So I won't bother rolling. But maybe next turn, if I'm still alive, I will have that opportunity. So actually, it's equal or below the victory point. So I had two victory points, and I rolled a three. I actually nearly won. <laughs> One other thing I should have mentioned as well is when a enemy model is knocked out, there's a morale test for closest models, um, and you roll a dice. Depending on the quality of the soldiers, um, they may not be able to advance. Uh, so I rolled for my uh, French models here and they were fine. They could have got uh, a scared result, which means that they wouldn't advance towards the enemy. And if they were already scared and then they got another poor result, they could have fled the battlefield. But that did not happen. Brave Ponsonby in the centre was a bit worried, but actually no one shot at him. This guy shot down at my sergeant, Jebediah, and took him down. These guys over here, one of the, uh, one shot at Ponson being missed, one shot over here and wounded my sniper guy. And then the one I've been firing at all morning, fired over here and actually took him down, knocked him over. Not looking good. I've got three models left. Right, I need to really take some of these Frenchmen down. They are doing for me now. Uh, okay, right, well, let's see what happens. So... No good shooting here, no good shooting here. Ponsonby even popped his head round to fire a shot with his pistol. He needs a six and still failed to hit. I did score two more victory points, so I'm now on a four, but I didn't get four or less. So we're going to another round. I only have three models left now, which is going to be hard, potentially. <laughs> In this round I got two early activations, so I fired with this guy, missed again. He literally misses every time. Uh, I even tried a shot with Ponsonby and missed. Uh, in response, thankfully, no one hit me. Gosh, these guys all fired at Ponsonby and the other guy there and missed. This guy has moved forward, so he hasn't really got a clear shot anymore. 
Um, he survived his wound roll and he has reloaded his gun. I uh, did move this guy, redeployed him a little bit and tried a shot over there and he hit, but only managed to stun uh, the Frenchman, so he'll only have one action now. Alright, I am up to six points though now, so let's see if I can win the game. Yes! Amazingly, we've managed to win the game. God knows how, but um, we've claimed the objective. The French have realised that I hold the centre of the table and they have withdrawn um, to drink some vin show or something elsewhere. Um, well, it doesn't feel like a victory, let's put it that way. But anyway, let's have a little look at the post-game aspect. So there's quite a lot of this uh, starter game is about the development of your crew. So we'll see what happens to my little squad of light bobs. So at the end of that game, yes, I won. I gain an operation point. And then to sort of simulate the fact that these small skirmishes are part of a grander campaign, you roll 2d6, and if you get under your number of operation points, then the campaign ends. But of course, you know, so like, the campaign has not ended yet, um, and nor is it likely to for a while. Um, I then roll for those who survived the battle, um, or weren't knocked out. They had the chance of getting an advance. I actually did get an advance for Private Thomas Crossley, who is, I think this one, let's call him this one. Um, he was the guy who was hanging out in the wood, not really doing anything. So, strangely, he got an advance. His advance is reloader. So if I roll a natural six on a shoot action, he can reload for free, which is actually not bad. Um, then for those who were injured, so that's uh, Private Graham Wild, my better shooter, um, Private Nathaniel Grant, I think it was, I can't remember these names, um, and then Jebediah. I rolled to see what happened. They all got away scot-free with the exception of Jebediah. So my sergeant, my fast-moving sergeant, is not dead, but he's so grievously injured that he's actually been sent home, maimed probably. He's probably had an amputation or something. No longer will he be in my little task force. Because I have less than six models, uh, on a four plus, I can get an extra recruit. Well, of course, I didn't get an extra recruit, so I'll be going into the next game with just five models. And you can see how well I did against those <laughs> French troops there. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's not quite the same as some of the other five parsecs ones in the fact that, uh, sorry, games like five parsecs. Uh, the experience is a bit different. It's a bit more sort of general. As I say, the campaign is evolving in a more uh, ill-defined way, which sort of suits the fact that uh, it's a, a war rather than a sort of a, uh, a skirmish where you're trying to sort of gain wealth individually or something like that. So anyway, I um, I enjoyed it. It was good. I, it was a bit tough that game. It didn't help. I didn't have much cover on my side. It was quite open, wasn't it? So that probably didn't help me. Um, I was a bit unlucky on the rolls, but you know I only came off losing one model, which is not bad. And I did win the mission. So yeah, we'll have another go again. Um, we're just trying another sort of setting for the same basic rule set. Certainly a very quick and easy skirmish game. Uh, this video's going to be just 20 minutes or so, if that. Uh, the rule sheet as well is only 15 pages long, quite simple, and includes the campaign element as well. So I encourage people to go and check it out. Um, get it on um, War Games Vault. It's not very expensive, only a few dollars, I think. Um, yeah, so check it out and see if you like it. Um, Thanks very much for watching guys, please like, comment and subscribe, check out the Way to Fire Facebook page and the Way to Fire Hobby Hangout Facebook page, um, where you can post up what you're working on, and uh, listen out for the Way to Fire podcast, and take care, bye!